Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to the last of the six reward vehicles that you get from the Operation Frost, the Winter Marathon, and it is the German Type 1924 Jaguar, or Jaguar in German, and it is a battle rating 3.7 destroyer from 1941. As such, it is equipped with three 1005 centimeter SKC 32s with 300 rounds overall and four 20 millimeters, and on top of this, also six torpedoes of the G7A variety. This ship is a full premium and it has overall good silver line and RP income for a rank 3 premium. It is obviously there to um, <clears throat> uh, in competition with the Type 1939 T31 and also the Z20 Karl Galster. What do I think about this ship? Well, you will see in this battle that it even struggles sometimes with PT boats, except with bots that you can hull break with your main guns. And I have to say that this is not a very impressive vessel. And I want to just uh, talk you through, because if you look at the rest of the very strong German 3.7 lineup, the Type 1939 has just one gun more and stronger secondaries, uh, then there is the K2 that spawns with patrol boats and has four 120mm guns and significantly better anti-air capabilities. And yeah, the Type M1939 is at 3.3, but again, it also spawns nowadays with patrol boats and has a lower battle rating of 3.3 instead of 3.7, so there you can forgive the one gun less than the Jaguar. And well... I have shown what you can do with those 37s. Then there is also another Jaguar, but this is the Jaguar class 140. And so this is obviously a completely different breed of ship. And I would rather compare this not with the MZ-1, but rather with just a nerfed version of the Type 1939 T-31. And a uh, very other uh, impressive vehicle is the Type 1924 Leopard, and that has also three guns, but they are the 12.8 centimeters, and so they hit harder with 2 kilograms of TNT instead of 1.55, and they also have, believe it or not, a faster reload. So I am not really into this, because 3.3 seconds versus 4 seconds on the Leopard uh, with bigger shells that you also can use at range if you have to deal with other destroyers is just a bigger plus point For collectors sure if you don't want to invest uh, any sort of money into naval forces, but you still want to grind good portions of the lower ranks of Germany Sure, then you can play for it, but this is not a high-value ship. I am honest with you and it is really the whole package and the situation that I found myself. So there are a lot of aircraft coming in. A lot of aircraft coming in for revenge once you manage to get some PT boats. And to be honest, that sounds all very negative. What are the good aspects, you might ask? Well, I have to say that when you get into the right matchup, like this one, and you can deal with patrol boats only, then sure, you have the health to soak a lot of damage up. Your ship is just significantly bigger. You don't hull break, and those are significant plus points. But again, more than often, you have to look at battle rating 3.7 uh, 3 the way like, yeah, you're going to fight Fletchers. Hell, you're fighting the other super destroyers, uh, such as the Sumner, the Summers, and also the Z... 32, the Narvik Zerstörer with actual cruiser guns. And you can imagine how that ends for you, right? So, Gajin has proclaimed that this is a ship with fast firing guns. I mean, yeah, four seconds is not really bad, but look at this guy. I have to really, really kill every single section and then even aim for the turret and or the bridge. And so, even versus those ships, eventually I'll take damage. And a well-hidden Soviet patrol boat with 85mm guns can wear me down. It takes a while, but at the end he can do this. And I'm only talking about AG, because in contrast to the K2 or the said Soviet armored river patrol boats, you have no armor. And you're pretty fragile in that aspect. Yes, versus 20mm, 37 and 40mm gunfire, you can soak up quite a bit. 
let's talk about the firepower again, shall we? Because you can help break certain uh, or a big portion of the patrol boats with a single hit. That's true. And that's pretty comfortable. On the other hand, well, that's practically all that you have. Three main guns that rotate slowly and they also have no protection. So if you get ambushed by a patrol boat, then you have only three of those turrets that uh, turn slowly. The gun firing angles are also not spectacularly good. I mean, they are not really bad. Also, the middle turret is 360 degrees uh, traversable. And, well, they can get knocked out. You only have three of them and two of them are mounted in the back. So your forward firepower is just a single gun. And then there are the 20 millimeters. You have uh, four of them and you get a lot of attention from planes. I have been destroyed numerous times by aircraft before my 20 millimeters uh, just opened up. Yes, versus planes that fly in a straight line and do multiple attack runs, you eventually shoot them down or your autogunners with an excellent crew and the expert qualification that you purchase or should purchase for the ship. Every little bit helps. One benefit that this ship has are the torpedoes. You have two times three and they are of the, as I said, the G7A variant, not the E variant, meaning they have an actual reasonable usability. Without the torpedo mod, they are going 81 kilometers per hour, which is absolutely awesome. But they only have a 6 kilometer range. With the torpedo mod, you have then 14 kilometers range, but the speed drops significantly to only 56 kilometers per hour. It depends on the, ver on the environment that you're fighting in. If you're at close quarters, then the faster torpedoes are to be preferred. And so this is the entire package. Now, if you have one of those good matchups and you rack up the kills, what is actually the reward? Is it, is it any good? Well, first of all, this is an actual premium. The Civil Line Modifier is 1.3 times 2.0, which is just short of the maximum modifier for ships of 1.4 times 2.0. And the reward for the RP is 1.42. Now, that is the same as with the Type 1939 T31. So, a lot of you might argue, well, you know, I don't feel like investing in the Type 1939 T31, but I want a ship that is a premium at this battle rating and for playing it, for, for getting it essentially for free. Yeah, sure, you can get it and you have just one turret less. If you're okay with this, this premium is fully okay for you, I guess. But again, this is not an absolute meme machine. This is not a Silk Lover's dream. This is a slightly below average ship. It has its advantages, it has its disadvantages. There is nothing particularly wrong with the ship itself, I have to hasten to add, but it's just again one of those ships where compression becomes really noticeable. And so this is what I want to warn you from if you see it on the marketplace for ridiculous prices. That's all that I try to uh, tell you. So with this how much would I pay for it? Well, five euros at most, or the equivalent to this in terms of uh, dollars or Gaijin coins. It's really not that brutal. It's really not that great to really have it. Sure, as a collector, sure, as somebody that really wants to have it. And now look at the damage just before the match ends on this K2. It has armor, it has much bigger guns, and it outtrades you. And this spawns with patrol boats and it has stronger secondaries. Yes, yeah, sure, it doesn't have the uh, torpedoes, but that's not really the selling point of the K2, is it? And this is how we end the match with the survival and the terror of the sea badge, which are really great rewards. And that was, I think, a really lucky match. But we also slaughtered quite a few bots because this is a test drive. The civil line income is much less than it should be. So with a civil line, uh, with an actual premium civil line modifier, it would be a roughly 60,000. But look at this. The achievements, all the medals together were uh, nearly 20,000, so half of our income, it would be a third overall. That is the Type 1924 Jaguar for you, a ship that is 
not really bad, but not really spectacular either. That's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, give it a hit, subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies, on the battlefields and on the waves of War Thunder.